my international darlings and welcome back to another video on Meredith's channel and yes, that's me. First of all, as you can see, a lot of new things around here, right? With a little help of my friend Hannah, I changed the visual ID of the channel a little bit. He is an amazing artist and I'm really happy to have his support, so if you're interested in seeing more of his art, check out his Instagram, I'll be leaving a link in the description too. I also finished the McLennan series and I want to thank all you guys for the feedback on it. If you haven't watched it, I'll be leaving in a card and in the end of the video. Before this video starts, I want to give my channel win from the bottom of my heart. Thank you so much for all the engagement and the feedback on the Nowhere Boy video. Because I don't know why, <laughs> but this video blew up while I was traveling and I was really, really happy because it was a difficult video to make. And I just want to thank you so much if you are here on this channel watching this video because of the Nowhere Boy video. Thank you. I, I can't even... It was a good video, right? I, I knew it was a good video. <laughs> thank you so much for being around. And I hope you enjoy my other content too. But yeah, as you can see in the title of this video, I went about Bruins exposition, John Lennon, the New York Years. Some of you might know about it already since I said that in another video and even posted a picture in the community tab here on this channel and immediately got cancelled by a Karen for posting a picture with a picture. Anyway, <laughs> today I will be showing you the exposition and telling you a little bit about my experience there. First thing you have to know is that Bob Gruen is one of the most respectable photographers of the music world. He not only worked with John Lennon, but also with the Rolling Stones, Elvis, Bob Dylan, Bob Marley, Madonna, and many other incredible artists over the 40 years of his work. It is an impeccable resume. In this expo specifically, Bob had an intimate approach to John Lennon's life in the 70s. As I said in the exposition description, Bob's pictures captured many of John's facets. The rock star, the ex beatle the husband, the father, the activist. And I could feel it in every room because each room had a different thematic. I was there with my boyfriend and friends, who are also Beatles fans. This is Anna, or as we call her, Julua. She is also a John Stan, just like me. This is Lexu, a George Stan. Hey, Mary B. Edges, everyone. This one is Lauda, or Lobebs, who is also a Harrison girl. And this is Elena, the McCartney one. My boyfriend, Mateus, also has Paul as his favorite Beatle, but he's not as Beatle maniac as us girls. Yet. The first room was this dark black place with a lot of pictures. You've got that fear mixed with excitement, just like arriving at a new place, really. The pictures were of John's first moments in New York City and they left the sensation of the dream is over, but there is a lot of space to dream in reality now. There were also the thematic signs. My favorite was the How to Survive in New York one. As we followed to the next room, there was this big orange wall with a timeline of events in John's life. Following that, there was a dark blue room with some pictures that I believe were taken between 1972 and 1974 and a lot of bottoms with political statements. I believe this room represented his activist side and his involvement with political issues. There were also some promo pictures, you know, like some pictures that I saw and I instantly remembered, oh, this is from mind games photo shoot, this is from Walls and Bridges. 
And after that, there was a room with a wall that we could not record or take any pictures of them. And the reason of that is because those were the original pictures and the negatives. And by photographing with a flashlight or recording with a flashlight, we could damage them. So it was forbidden for us to even get too much close to them. By the side of this room, there was another one, this time very different from the others. All white, with a soft carpet and some curtains between every picture. This room represented John as a house husband and his years of settling down. There was also a little old television in the room, showing some homemade recordings. A very comfy atmosphere indeed. Outside the white room, there was also a pillow, which I believe was maybe John's pillow? Honestly, there wasn't anything explaining this part, so I was just confused. Ironically or not, just across this room, there was a completely different scenario. Representing John's desire to come back to his rockabilly roots in the rock and roll album era, there was this little record shop ambient with lots of records, posters and vintage objects. The sad part is, because of Covid, we could not touch the objects, but it was an understandable reason. The following room was my favorite one. It was a green space with a lot of plants, videos and music playing. In the middle of it, there was the imagined floor piece with some benches, just like a little park. It was kind of spiritual too, I can't put my finger on it and explain why, but there was celestial vibe. My friends and I danced around to the music, it was a great, unforgettable moment. Last but not least, there was the final room. And it was a shock, really. Just like the first room, it was black, really dark and gave you the same feeling of fear, but this time, no excitement at all. The pictures around the room were related to John's death, and there were signs too. I think the only reason I didn't cry my eyes out is because I had already cried earlier that day, so I kind of ran out of tears. But it was it. Why are you wearing a bottle that says I love John? Because I love John. That's all. That's all. <laughs> At the end of the night, we went to a bar and had a great time singing Beatles songs together. There were literally only us as clients and we were all in the same house, so it was a safe and very fun environment. By the way, I just want to explain to you guys that the only reason we went all together to the exposition is because we were living actually at the same house. We are from different cities, but we traveled to Sao Paulo just to see this exposition because it was its last month in Brazil. We also respected all the government's demands such as wearing masks all the time and washing our hands. I would literally squeeze a bottle of honey alcohol on the hands of everyone every 20 minutes. We also respected all the museum rules, so if this exposition goes to your city, make sure to know them beforehand and respect them. Anyway, that's pretty much it everyone, thank you so much for watching, if you enjoy it, make sure to press the like button and send to a friend you think might like it too. Subscribe to my channel to become a certified international darling. I don't know what that is, but it sounds cool, right? Leave your feedback in the comment section, just be nice to me, I have feelings, okay? My social media is on the screen right now. Follow me there, let's be friends, and I see you guys in the next video, bye bye.